This is our month of overcomers credentials. Life as we all know, it comes with a lot of adversities. Life comes with challenges, calamities and infirmities. But there is a place in God where your sacrificial commitment and your selfless services becomes an audible voice that guarantees divine intervention and exemptions. There is a place in God where your sacrifices and commitments become brutally audible that guarantees divine interventions and exemptions. Every man or woman that has overcome in any dimensions of human tribulations Sir, they had valuable credentials before heaven. In order to command the involvement of heaven in every given situation, they had a credential. God is just and God is righteous. But he has an unequal manifestation in our situations based on the value of our credentials and these credentials must reflect his interests these credentials must reflect his mission every man or woman that ever overcome anything in life scripturally as a child of God sir they had a credential that reflect the interests of God and the interests of the kingdom overcomers credentials sir they are the prices you have to pay to become a kingdom asset in this kingdom the only thing that is free is our salvation every other thing you must work it out Every other blessing, sir, is a reward for service and loyalty. Where there is no loyalty and there is no service, there is no reward. Your commitment to the cause and the advancement of the kingdom of God is what dares you to God. It's what pulls you to God. It's what God is attracted to you. When the matters of the kingdom becomes your concern, Hear me, sir. Whatever is your concern becomes his matter. Whatever is your concern becomes a matter to God. Once your the kingdom is your concern, if you pretend not to know that the God's kingdom is your problem, whenever you are in a mess, God will pretend like he didn't know you are in trouble. Hey. Even your prayer becomes charismatic affliction and corporal punishment. Hey. God does not bless an idle Christian. Sir, there must be a credential to show. And part of the credentials we have looked at is the credential of unbroken service. We looked at that in the first service. Yes, sir. We also look at the credential of head turning sacrifice. Someone say head turning sacrifice. The one that God's head turn as if he take it go. He begins to do this for you. On that divine option, let's do rest. Number three in this service is the credential of kindness. Man is naturally selfish and egocentric. Man is naturally greedy. Therefore, kindness is an act that is beyond selfishness. Kindness is an act that is beyond personal considerations. Every time kindness is activated, promises are actualized, prophecies are fulfilled. Anytime kindness is activated, prophecies are fulfilled, expectations are realized. The act of Abraham's kindness to the three angels 
in Genesis chapter 3 became a credential for the conception and the birth of Isaac. Genesis chapter 18 and from verse 1 at the heat of the day when life was hot for Abraham the Lord appeared in the plane of memory and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day talking about Abraham and he lifted up his eyes and looked and lo behold three men stood by him and when he saw them he ran to meet them from the den tent door and bowed himself towards the ground continue sir and they said my lord if now he said my lord if i have found favor in thy sight pass not away i pray thee from thy servant the next verse he said let little water i pray thee be fetched and wash your feet rest yourself under the tree <laughs> And I will fish a morsel of bread and comfort your heart. And after that you can pass on. For therefore are you come to your servant. And they say so do as thou hast said. <laughs> Kindness. Many of you. The angels that were sent to you. You drove him through wickedness. <laughs> so you miss credentials. So you are repeating class. God bought a poor man to say you can treat ordinary people before you bring a rich man. You look at him from head to toe. Then they count meat for pot for Muslim be number 15. Will you disappear before I open my eyes? You disgraced him. Even if you won't marry him, there are kind words you speak. Kindness is a credential. Yes, sir. Who would have told Abraham that these are angels and among the three, Jesus was among them. Mm. They were on a journey. They weren't planning to branch Abraham's house. But Abraham compelled them by his kindness. And God ate food. When God finished eating food, <laughs> verse 10 of that scripture, they asked him, where is Sarah thy wife? Let's go to get back to get back to, to, to verse, uh, verse 9 first. Verse 9. And they said to him, Where is Sarah your wife? When God ate. Hey, when God ate. And he said, Behold, in the tent. Verse 10. He said, And he said, I will certainly, not we will, I will. That means Jesus was among the three of them. Yes, there I am himself. I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life look sarah thy wife shall have a child and sarah had it in the tent door which was behind him and what happened sir now abraham and sarah were old see their condition and well stricken in age and it ceased to be with sarah after the manner of women number one abraham has stopped sleeping with sarah sarah is an ss luggage a retired contraband Come. Is somebody here what she's not useful for human pleasure anymore her days of usefulness has, is over. Seeds. He has ceased according to women. Read, put that scripture back. It has ceased unto them according to women. That was their condition. Therefore, when she considered the condition, she laughed within herself saying, after I have washed all, shall I have pleasure? Even to sleep with him is a problem. How much more pregnancy? My Lord being old, and the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh? Saying, Shall I shall she bear a child when I'm old? And Sarah fear caught her. <laughs> because God was already saying. And then the Lord said, Is there anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto her according to the time of life. Sarah shall have a child. I prophesy to somebody here. I will say, By your kind heart. Yes, sir. Towards God, towards the brethren, yes. towards your pastor, yes. may heaven drop on your life. Amen. May your expectation become a reality. Amen. Receive the visitation of angels Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The kindness of the Shunammite woman. Became the credential that broke the grip of barrenness in her life. She said, I perceive that this man is a holy man of God. Who passed by us continually. Let's build a house. The outcome of that simple kindness towards a prophet. 
was that the prophet became guilty and began to ask is there anything you want woman she said nothing i'm a woman among myself i dwell among my people i don't have prayer point <laughs> elisha laughed in his heart he said god can't bring me here without a need that must be something in your heart but however i will ask the lord then he has a says sir since we came here i've not had the cry of a baby no child moving around ask her i'm sure she doesn't have a child let's call the servants and ask them they ask the servant is there any child say no say call me the shunammite woman she appear say on this kindness based on this credential of kindness you shall carry a baby by this time next year she held the leg of the prophet and said, do not lie to me because this is a close cut case. I have forgotten about childbearing. Don't bring my mind back. Don't give me hope. Many prophets give me hope. Many men of God give me hope. Please don't give me hope. Please, please, please. I don't go that area. It's not a good area. I have finished all the cries. I have finished all hell looking for help. I have closed that chapter. Elisha said there are prophets and there are prophets. By this time next year, Bam! The woman miss her period. I prophesy to somebody that is showing kindness to God, yes. showing kindness to the work of God, yes. showing kindness to me, your pastor. Yes, sir. As the Lord live it, yes, whom I serve, I declare, yes. may the Lord give you a visitation. Amen. Visitation on your business, Amen. visitation on your finances, Amen. visitation on your job. Amen. That you will never be able to recover yes, for time and eternity. Hey, Lift up your hands, shall Lord visit me afresh. Lord visit me afresh. The kindness of Dorcas in Acts chapter 9 was the enviable credentials that gave her a second change of life, a second chance for life. Dorcas was dead, but by her kindness towards widows, towards orphans, towards fatherless. Sir, her kindness turned things around did what fan things around my friend when you show kindness to god and to the house of god into the man of god you show compassion am i talking to somebody here there are believers that are cruel to men of god they are callous to men of god they can say anything on principle anything imaginable they can say it on the servant of god and the altar of jehovah but for a believer refrain from it even if a man of God is weak, pray for him. Yes. That is the highest you can do. Yes, sir. Pray for him. Let's not be among those that are dividing the kingdom. Show kindness. One of my stupid sons that broke the church. Today, police were there to carry him from the altar. When a man of God I respected called me early hours of the morning. He said, man of God, for my sake. I said, this guy went to Facebook everywhere to talk. He must speak on Facebook every day. He said, it is done, sir. I told the police, do your service in that church. After service, tell him that would have carried you. But we forgive you. But if you don't report by tomorrow, we will come for you. When a man of God spoke, I surrendered. I didn't speak anymore. When people talk to you, do you hear? Your wife reports you to us. You want to die. You say unprintable things about us. Then demonize your pastor. All in order to cover your wickedness. And you think you are doing good. Tomorrow you are looking for kindness from God. Tomorrow you want the prayer of that man of God to fall on your life. Your husband reports you to us. We spoke to you. You now can say unprintable things to your husband. Just so that you so that so that you you he does not take our counsel serious. What do you who turn the heart of simple people? The Bible says it's better you are not born than to be born and be alive, and that you become a stumbling block to the innocent ones. Hear me, sir. There are things that if you want to do, if you remember, how many people will be discouraged? How many people will lose faith in God? What you should do is not to do it at all. Kindness will cost you pain. Mm. But kindness is a credential. 
It's a credential that when you stand in the day of evil, when evil want to blanket your life, when there was when there is no hope, when men fail you, when you stand naked before the immortal God, your kindness will speak for you as a credential. Abraham was carrying prophecy. But one kindness towards three men who looked strange, but something tell him they were not ordinary. It changed their life. It changed their life. I gave a young man a prophecy that was going to be great. I said, I will pray for you 21 days. Anoint him for 21 days. After 21 days, his senior brother called him and said, come to Lagos. I was in Jos. And it was about this October time I was doing Nigeria at 100. And he told me, Papa, I immediately I obeyed in Nigeria 100. My brother called me to come to Lagos. So he went to Lagos for his brother to help him. The wife of the brother discouraged him, the brother. The brother said, I wanted to help you, but I've changed my mind. So he called me from Lagos. I said, relax. God knows what he's doing. Don't, don't bother. I spoke about breakfast in Nigeria, breakfast, lunch in London. I spoke about, I said, it was a joke. So he flew back. A man was by his side in the plane when he was coming back. The man will sleep like this, hit him. He said, excuse me, sir, please arrange yourself. Say, sorry, sorry. The man will sleep again and hit him. He said, sorry, sir, you are on me. Have you not said, my dear, I'm so tired. He said, no problem. So he turned to him and said, do you know your higher Kwande? I'm coming to uh, just to look for a man. He said, yeah, I used to hear of his name. I know he stays at the GRA area. He said, please, can you take me to him? He said, why not? I'll take you to him. No problem. So they landed in the cold of just then the flight delayed to about 9 p.m so the the flight was delayed in tonight he now said to him uh sir i don't know we have to go to my house because i don't know the main place i have to go to my house so that i can pick my uh my brother's car he was staying with another of his brother in joss i'll pick my brother's car or my brother will meet me with uh, drive and take you to the place he said no problem so they got to millionaire quarters to his brother's place so he sat in the parlor and by the time he came ambassador have slept again in the parlor so he left him so around 11 30 he tapped ambassador oh so i slept like this sorry i'm sorry say take tea he took tea so they left they took him to ayakwande and left him he gave him a card when he was going he said please i want to see you before i leave tomorrow this is my card it was the ambassador of Nigeria to Italy. He didn't know. Kindness. He said, so I've been with an ambassador. I didn't know. Sorry, sir. He said, no, never mind. You are a kind man. Few people, people like you are very few in Nigeria. I would like to help you. Can you come to Italy? Say, why not? I would like to come to Italy. My dear, the final story is my son went to Italy. The ambassador connected him to some guys in US, some guys in London. This guy is chopping life with 35 fingers, not 10 fingers. He borrowed the fingers of his enemies. His life changed. Prophecy was on his head. The people he knew has failed him. Where will his head come? He had only one credential called the credential of kindness. Am I talking to somebody here? The person who you sat next to may not look good, may not look assuming. Huh? But there's nothing wrong. He say, How are you? There's nothing wrong. He say, How are you? He greeted you. Why would you answer? You know whether that's the person that will connect you to your husband? Yes, so. Before you write people off, try to be kind to them. Thank you, sir. I can go on and on with several testimonies of people through simple acts of kindness. Their life was transfigured. You don't know where you meet people. You don't know where you meet people. You don't know where you meet people. One of my protocols. <laughs> Push a man who came to see me. And I look at the protocol, I said, do you know that this is a major general? See, the way you push him, he fell on the chair. Am I a God that you're pushing a man like that? Hey. And I look at my son and I said, do you know that man can help you tomorrow? As if I was prophesying. Three months after, today is the chief of defense staff. He's there with four-star general. 
My son can never tell me to give him a note to go and see him for help. He can't do that. Because when both of them meet, he will remember the push. Hey, he will remember the push. Whatever you are doing in the church. <laughs> Papa Deboe was in the plane coming to Abuja. Business class. He just flight, just a, a normal flight. Few years back. And a young man came and knelt down with jeans and canvas. This canvas with short jeans like this t-shirt. He said, Daddy, good afternoon. He said, ah, how are you, my son? He greeted him. Very nice. He came by. He said, Daddy, I want to tell you something. Say, my son, what is it? He said, Daddy, I mean, our convention is coming. Is there uh, anything you want me to do? What is the budget? He said, my son. Meanwhile, the boy have been praying. God told him not to ask for the money from the people because every year they will be taxing all the redeemed different places. The budget is in billions. So he said the Lord told him not to do that this year. He said, I will provide. So he didn't know where. But he was nice to the young man. And the young man said, Daddy, the budget, please. He said, young man, you know the budget is so big. Just give whatever you can. Say, no, Daddy, I said the budget, sir. Let me know what is the total budget, sir. Baba did not say, who are you? He said the budget is in the range of 3.5 billion to 3.8 billion. He said, ah. He said, okay. He went in, came back, wrote a check. 4.8 billion. <laughs> and the boy almost fainted. He looked at said, young man, come here. What do you do for a living? <laughs> he said, daddy, daddy. You don't need to ask. I'm a soul importer. Many years ago, you prayed for me. You gave me money to start a business. He said, a friend connected me. I'm, I'm now doing business in Malaysia. Now I lift oil. I lift what? Oil. He says, young man, I'll be distracted with your look. He said, no, daddy, I am blessed. To cut the long story short, that guy has houses in Victoria Islands and in Lake, like water. God, he does one man make the bill of a convention. Jesus. One Little kindness. Little kindness. I went to preach. One pastor monkey dealt with me. So I got angry. I, he gave me offering. I told him I sold it back. I don't need it. So I said, God, I preach for you, not for him. So please, I have dashed him the money. If you like, bless me. If you like, don't bless me. Because he gave me that. He didn't give me the offering when I was going. He didn't give me when I was in the car. It was when I was about to enter. He gave me the offering so that I will not count it. So when I hold the offering and I saw it's looking like precious. I say, how much is this? He say, hey, sir, 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 I dash you. Don't even mention the amount. I dash you. He texts, says, sir, please, can I have the account? The money is so, so, so amount. I want to transfer it. I reply, never mind. I sow it as a seed. So I was in the aircraft, looking frustrated. Then I told God, anyway, it's you I came and preached for. So if you like, bless me. If you like, don't bless me. One long, a young man on Azumi was smiling like he doesn't want to stop the smile, like Christmas coat. <laughs> I was so happy to see you. Man of God, lay hands. I said, this guy should just leave me alone. I just want to, to just close my eyes. He, he just, just leave me alone. <laughs> so I prayed for him. He came back again. He said, man of God, I am so privileged. There's this budget, I, this project I'm having. Can you lay hands on him, on me again, on this project? I lay hands on him. I spoke in tongues. I didn't, I didn't feel like doing that, but I, I just blessed him. And I prayed for him. He came back again, gave me an envelope. I looked at the envelope. I just kept the envelope by the side. And I didn't talk. I said, thank you very much. I kept it by the side. I now pull out my bag, my little bag, put it inside. Something says, somebody gave you money. Check the money. I said, 50,000. So no problem, I put it. Don't say check. I tell my check it, bros, $10,000. I shot in the crowd, bros, where are you? Come back. The anointing is on me now. <laughs> the anointing is on me now. The anointing is on me now. Come back. Yes, sir. He said, anything, sir. I said, nothing. Just kneel down. He said, aircraft has spoken tongues in capital letters. No matter who you are, the gift of a man makes a room for you. Yes, sir. Never. There are people you treat. I have learned not to. Even people that serve me. 
I have learned not to despise them because I am not their rewarder. Yes, they were only privileged to serve under me. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? When God counts them worthy, he does not consult me. He blesses them all the same. Am I talking to somebody here? Even when you pay your tithe, you give your offerings, they may say you are giving it to Chalena, my friend. If you understand God and his operation and mutus operandi, yes. you will know that it, God is only testing your heart in this place. He is the determinant of your future. Because whatever you do for his kingdom, you are building a credential. Yes, sir. I prophesy to somebody I here. Receive. receive grace to be kind. Amen. I don't like that your amen. Receive grace to be kind. Amen. Receive grace to be kind. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. By the act of kindness, sir, Rebecca got herself a precious seed for a husband in Isaac. A precious seed of a husband in Isaac. Rebecca was a good woman. She's not only wearing cortex and wearing mascara and wearing wig and wearing layer one, layer two, painting face. She was not only good at that. Rebecca was a hard worker. The Abraham's servants in Genesis. Uh, where's that scripture? Chapter 19, I guess. Yes. Chapter 19. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. 19. No, 24, 12. 24, 10. Genesis 24 10. They came to, 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 to look for a wife for Isaac. And they met Rebecca by the well. Mm? They met Rebecca by the well. Mm. And the servants took 10 camels. The camels of their master departed. All of the goods of their master were in their hand. And he arose and went toward Mesopotamia or to the city of Nahor. Continue, sir. And made this camel to kneel down without the city by the well of the water at the time of the evening. Even the time that women go out to draw water. Continue, sir. And he said, Oh Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me speed this day and show me kindness. The wrong story is that anybody who I asked to feed my camel and he fed the camel, Lord, let it be Isaac's wife. Rebecca came, shaking her waist, young girl. Some of you girls, you are very lazy, slow poison. You need prayers. As she was walking with her high heels, she brought sheep. The servant said, young girl, can you give us water? She said, no problem. Ten camels. Every camel drinks 120 gallons of water. Rebecca fish 120 gallons times 10. How, much, how many gallons is that? 1,000 watts. 200 gallons of water mm. and gave a camel and they were watching and they looked at her and said who are you who is your father you are too kind can we know you to cut the long story short hey. rebecca told them who she was and behold it was a relations of abraham mm. they follow her home that's how they got wife for isaac kindness today rebecca was inoculated into the commonwealth of israel by kindness. kindness young lady to your beauty add kindness hey. if a lady is fine educated and she's not kind she's a wasted container yes sir hey. do you do hear what i said wasted. better a man if he's not kind he will use open eye to try to succeed in some ways but if you're a girl a woman hey. and kindness is far from you go and kiss transformer because you will suffer don't say this pastor. You know me. I preach Oha. I fear nobody. That's where I'm different from other pastors. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody yes, here. Sir. I have trained many people in this city. I have taught many lives. Some come here as a transit. Because a church is like Ami Barak. Church is like a bus stop. Any bus stop you reach. Some passenger will drop. Others will enter. Journey continues. Yes sir. Mm. It is now that I decided to build church. Before I was building miracle centers. People call them miracles and go anywhere they go. But now I have decided from the 10th year anniversary. To sit down and build church. That's why syllabus have changed. Especially after COVID. Yes sir. The Bible said to be kind to men. Because you may end up. Entertaining angels. And you don't know. Sir. It becomes a credential. For angelic consideration once ever you are whenever you are kind it becomes what your kindness becomes a credential for angelic consideration whenever you are kind i pray
pray for somebody. No, no, no. He's not hearing my prayer. I, I pray for somebody. May you be kind to God. May Amen. you be kind to the work of God. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Number four. <laughs> credential you need to overcome. Is the credential of building a house for God. Luke chapter 7 verse 27. A centurion was a commander of a Roman soldier. Centurions so are very brutal regimental men. They are considered to be enemies of the Jews. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying here? Yes, sir. Luke chapter 7 verse 27. No, we're looking at the centurion. Get me that verse. I, I missed it. Sleep was too much on my eyes. I missed that scripture. Is it a centurion? Yes. About a centurion man who, who, who was of the Italian. Let's look at verse 2. Who was a part of the Italian bands. Verse 2, I guess. is verse 2. You know, I wrote Missy last night till I fell on top of the book. I wrote till I didn't know what I was writing. I slept. Because I came back from Ghana very late. And a certain Sotorium servant who was there unto him was sick and ready to die. Somebody say he was appointed to die. He was appointed to and die. where he heard of Jesus, he sent unto the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he will come and heal his servants. Continue, sir. And when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying that he was worthy of whom he should do this. For he loved our nation, see his credential. And he has built us a synagogue. See his credential. He don't build church for us. Then Jesus went with them. And when he was now not far from there, the house of Centurion sent friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself. I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. To cut the long story short, he begged him to speak the word only. Only. Sir, the Roman soldiers are the greatest enemies of the Jews. Yet, in spite of this hostility, the centurion went on to build the synagogues for them. Even though Jesus was reluctant, but he got to, he decided to go to his house. Why? Because he was persuaded by the credential of building for God a house. God does not play with any man that builds him a house. God does not joke with any man that builds him a sanctuary. He causes men who decorate their own house and leave his house. God curses people. If you want to see the curse of God, it's for you to see a house of God around you. And you do not decorate his house and decorate your own. You will go down. Haggai chapter 1 and verse 4. It gives God so much pleasure to build his house. It costs him so much displeasure and distress whenever you abandon his house. Is it time for you, O oh ye, to dwell in your sealed houses and in your house lie, and my house lie waste and this house lie waste? Now therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have sown much and bringing little. You eat, but you are not enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe, but this one is not warm. He that ended with his ended with his in a pocket full of holes. In a pocket with bags full of holes. Don't say as the Lord, consider your ways. How do you consider your ways? Verse 8, continue, sir. He said, go up to the mountains and bring woods uh, and build the house. Uh, that I will take pleasure in it and I will glorify. I will glorify, says the Lord of hosts. Continue, sir. You look for much and you know it comes in little. When you brought it in, I blew it upon it. Why? Says the Lord of hosts. Because of my house that is waste. You run every man to your own house. You run every man. Therefore, the heaven over you is stay from dew and the earth is stay away from her fruit. Sir. Finally, verse 11. And I call for drought upon the land and upon the mountains, upon your Corn and upon your new wine, upon the oil, upon they that are granted, bring it forth, uh, upon men and upon cattle, upon all the labor of your hand. I am the Lord that brings dryness. When I asked you for cement, you didn't bring, but you can buy cement for your houses. You start project in six months, you finish. But my house is there, nothing moves you. You never enter an oath to honor my name. 
Any time a church has project is the time millionaires are about to be battered. Thousandaires move to millionaires. Millionaires move to billionaires. Any time there are projects. Any time there are major projects. It changes people's life. It blesses them. I know a young man who has, is going to be with the Lord name. His name is Bakab. Bakab many years ago was in El Joe's church when I used to come to preach for him in Abuja. Finally, he joined an NHS, Paul and NHS church. And Bakap was there. He has nothing. But he walked to his pastor. He said, I'm an estate valuer. I don't have money. Man of God, lay hands on me. I will roof the whole of that Dunamis church there. And I'm going to build the whole. I'm going to build that seven story building myself. I don't have money, but lay hands on me. Hear me, sir. The first contract he had, his profit was 10 million. He brought all. He brought all again. Bakab moved to a multi millionaire. Became so rich. Building things for church. Then a time came, became so proud. Let's be very careful. Let's be very careful. Sir, you can't live in your mansion when God's house is in a tent. God is watching all of us to see where our passion is. First Kings chapter 11 verse 11 to 13. Despite the sin and transgression of Solomon, God could not divide the kingdom in his lifetime because of David and Jerusalem where Solomon built God a house. When God sees house, he said, wherefore the Lord said to Solomon, for as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded thee, I will surely take this kingdom or rent this kingdom from you and give it to thy servant. Continue, sir. Notwithstanding, in thy days, I will not do it for David, thy servant's sake, but I will rent it out of the hand of thy son. Verse 35, I have it. I will not rent away all the kingdom, but we give one tribe to the son for David, my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen. Where you build me a church in Jerusalem, that temple you built for me, for the sake of that temple, Solomon, I will spare you. Solomon built God a house. Solomon built God a house and prospered. <laughs> he served God for 13 years as a king. But basically dead for 27 years, Solomon didn't enter church. When he can go one slap Solomon, he remember his house. One slap Solomon, he remember David, his father. How David, his father, sold out himself. David cried and told God, what will you give me? For all I have done. And God said, I will preserve your seed. In 2 Samuel 7. God swore to David. He said, your children, I will chastise them with the rod of men. He said, but I will not put them away like I put Saul away. Because Saul lacks mercy with me. But you have mercy with me. Because of my mercies, I will keep your children. Suddenly, the next one after David started misbehaving. For 27 years, couldn't go to church. And was monkeying around. But the mercies of God, called the sure mercies of David, kept Solomon alive. The sacrifice of Solomon in building temples kept Solomon alive. Kept Solomon alive. There was a church in Enugu that was built by a man. He was a very rich man. He was driving past sin. He saw them in a bachard singing. He turned, he heard a voice, build them a church. He turned his face. He was driving again the following day. He told them, build them a church. Then he told himself, you will never pass this street again. So he told the driver, don't ever pass this street again when you are carrying me. He said, yes, sir. <laughs> he avoided the street for seven days. On the Monday, after seven days, he was going again. The street he was following was blocked. Police were doing such and such, block everywhere. He moved to another street, block. He had to pass in front of that church. His engine knocked. The Lord said to unbeliever, he said to him, build this church. Build them a church. So he walked towards there. He met the pastor praying for a few people. So who is the pastor of this church? He says, I don't like you. <laughs> I don't like, I'm a Catholic. I don't like you. I don't like you people's prayer. There's something just they tell me, say my building a church. Hey. 
give me the budget for this church. He said, okay, they rent the church. He said, ha, rent? He heard a voice, buy them the land and build the church. <laughs> he bought the land, built the church, dedicated the church. He and his family brought his friends, they dedicated the church. He said, Pastor, I'm not your member. I have finished what I feel in my heart. So, bye-bye. One year after, the man died. The wife bundled him and carried him to that church. Hey. Died. They were taking him to the mortuary. The wife called them. He said, divert. Carry him to that church he built. They carry him to that church and drop a dead body on the altar. They call pastor. Pastor say he's still on the way coming. Pastor is not the owner of the altar. So if you like, let him come. If you like, he shouldn't come. The woman said, God, I don't know. But my husband told me that you told him to build a church. He has built this church. Mm. Is this the thank you you will give to me? Hey. By killing my husband? The man just did and came back to life. Hallelujah. Now, to, as I'm telling you today, he has built 11 churches. He said when he was going, they were taking him to hell. Hey. An angel stopped and said, because of this church you did, go back. You will now start living your life for me. He said, Lord, I am ready. Because the horror people that carried him, he was afraid. That was how he came back and started doing things for God. People who see death, they are not normal anymore. The things that matter to you doesn't matter to them anymore. My own wife has drastically changed. Hallelujah. She view life in another dimension again. Because when you get there and come back, you will see the vanity of life. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. Because the day you close your eyes in death, the day you are going, my friend, nothing matters to you anymore. Your car, your house, your achievement, your bank account doesn't matter to you anymore. Hear me. What is before you is how you are going to face the maker of your soul. Hey. At that moment, you will never remember how many children you have or wife. At that moment, you tremble at his side. That is the day you will give account. For the Bible says, they that are dead, their works lives after them. Yes, their works now begins to speak for them in eternity. Hey, before you die, make sure you build a church. Oh. Islam had taught their members the fastest way to Algena, the fastest way to the honor, and the receiving of seven virgins. Number one is to martyr them, die, be killed. Number two is to build a mox for your God. So any allergy that sees money. The moment he finished building a, 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 a house, he will build a mosque by the side of it. Hey. There's a massive mosque by family worship center. It was a residential. The men there in development board changed everything. Build a massive mosque there. But yet they fight anything, church. Hey. Yeah, you are a Christian, you are there. You cannot assist the kingdom of God to advance. God loves his house. Any man that assists in building his house, he's, he, he, he pulls God's attention. God has a special love and jealousy for you. God can go out to kill anybody to preserve you. The temple is a place where lives are changed. In 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 8 to 11, the Shunama woman built Elisha a house and there was a divine intervention. What fertility drugs could not do. What IVF could not do for a rich woman. Sir. Hey! By building a house for the man of God. By raising an altar for a man of God. Hear me? What fertility drugs could not do. The anointing did it. There is no how you can build God a house and lack heaven's intervention in every aspect of your life. Sir, your intervention is waiting for you 
is waiting for you at your church dedication. My friend, pray to be alive. Don't be going to already made churches. Look for a church. Be alive to attend a church dedication in your lifetime. Because there is a glory that comes to you, especially when you make an input. Yes, sir. This church is a raw material yes, sir. to make you and write your name in the archives of the chronicles of the immortals. Mm. Where you assist to build God a house, sir, in the realm of the spirit, you are a Colossus, and on earth, you are a Petrarch. Among the immortals, sir, <laughs> you are a spirit, just men made perfect. Never joke with God's house. Build him a house. You will provoke a legacy for yourself and your children. Children. Beautify God's house. Look for something and color his house. Number five, finally in this service. Uncommon giving. Credential of uncommon giving. Uncommon sacrificial giving any day, any time gains attraction in the realm of the spirit. Every spirit, whether righteous or unrighteous, responds to sacrifice. Every spirit, whether righteous or unrighteous, is respond to sacrifice. As much as sacrifice is valuable, uncommon giving is a valuable credential that brings the invasion of heaven on man here on earth, on common giving becomes a credentials that unleashes the unprecedented apparitions of God like in the case of Solomon. Where God appeared to him in 1 Kings chapter 3 verse 3. It is sacrifice that you have not done before. Not a regular occurrences among men. Solomon was the first to do such thing. The Bible said, and Solomon loved the Lord, walking the statue of his father. He sacrificed and burnt incense in high places. See the next verse. Only he. The king went to Gibeon, sacrifice there. For there was the high places of a thousand burnt offering. What, what did he want? Sacrifice that were on that altar. Verse 5. In Gibeon the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream. And said ask me what I shall give to thee. Spirit responds to our sacrifices. Spirit's response to our sacrifices. Solomon was the first to give that kind of sacrifice. A thousand offerings at once. The next time he was dedicating the temple. He gave 22,000 animals. Slaughtered in one day. As a sacrifice. Abel was the first among mortals. To do such uncommon sacrifices. In his days and time. No wonder even though he was dead. Yet he speaketh, it. Because his blood was a blood of sacrifice. Abraham offering of Isaac. Was the first among mortals. On record sacrificing his son. It was a credential. That made God swore an oath. To bless him. <laughs> the alabaster box of oil. Was an uncommon sacrifice. That till death. In the sermons of preachers, it has been remembered. Without sacrifice, anything you do for God is an expression of convenience. So it has no future. Without sacrifice, anything you do for God is an expression of convenience. It has no future. Sir, what men will do, God will not allow animals to do it. You didn't hear what I said. What men we do, God will not allow animals to do it. That is why we must make ourselves bodily available for sacrifice of the kingdom. No matter how beautiful our handbills are, angels can share them. We must be sacrificial in bodily. So sacrifice not only in giving money, bodily sacrifice, sacrifice of energy. Sacrifice of time. Sacrifice of resources. It has been proven. 
that personal contact is the most effective in soul winning. Any day, any time. Sir, that was why God carried Philip and attached him to the Ethiopian eunuch. Bodily, Acts chapter 8. That was why God had to send Peter bodily to Colinus' house. It takes sacrifice. The Bible says Peter was tired. He was hungry. He didn't even wait to eat food. Sacrifice moved him to follow the man without eating food. The Ethiopian eunuch was in need of a man to preach to him. He was needing salvation. Suddenly, God inconvenienced Philip. He was preaching on the altar. God said, Philip, you are needed in the wilderness of Damascus. Now, disappear from this altar. Now, Philip closed his eyes and disappeared. Members didn't see him. The next thing he appeared in the wilderness and preached to the Ethiopian eunuch. Got himself disappear, reappear on the altar and continue from where he stopped. There are aspects where bodily sacrifice is required. Evangelism requires bodily sacrifice. Follow up requires bodily sacrifice. That's why you came to start today. I am not there, but you must do your job. Because you are not doing it to me. The day I have to supervise you and persuade you, you are finished. You have lost your purpose before God. Rapid response. I have called you. I have given you assignment. If you like, take it. If you like, don't take it. If you like, be dodging. The days where it matters most, it will speak. Hear me, sir. God can't do his work himself. He needs people to be bodily available. The excellence of music lies on the praise and worship team. It's up to them to allow us to do any kind of thing. And it's up to them to give a standard. And standard cannot be found by eating a bar. Standard comes by rigorous sacrifice. Deny yourself everything you do for God. Show me any excellent choir anywhere there was sacrifice. Mm. Today you are the leader. Winners. If I remove you from being the leader, can you still sing? Mm. If, I, if I remove you from being the leader, can you still sing in the choir? Many of you have that position. When we take it from you, as if we're taking life from you. You are no longer relevant to God. You feel you should change church. You are a disrespect. You are a reproach to God. And to the work of God. And you think you can be honored in another church. You are operating under a close heaven. Because what was given to you. You have no humility in it. No sacrifice. You are a leader of protocol. Leader of, of, of usher. Leader of, of security. You come to church second service. You don't know what happens to that department in the first service. You don't know what happens to the department in weekday services. God is watching you. No bodily sacrifice towards his work. And you are not building credentials. That's why when they close one tap of blessing, you are looking like Somali refugee. That's why when one enemy rises against you in the office, he makes you a barbecue. Because there is no credentials. Because when you are preaching with occultic men, they are carrying weighty sacrifices on their head. Some of them, they sacrifice their manhood. Some of them, they sacrifice a lifetime of pleasure. Some of them sacrifice their sexual intercourse life for eternity. Yes, sir. And these are the men you want to fight. Come on, Osha, you can't do it successfully. Today you vex, tomorrow you come. Next tomorrow you vex, next tomorrow you come. You are full of the flesh. You cannot take delivery of your destiny where your body is not available as a sacrifice. Where men are not available, the kingdom of God suffers setbacks. Where men are not available, the kingdom of God suffers limitation and lack of advancement. For shepherd's house to advance, there must be selfless men. From 12 years, I started serving God till date. I told God, waste me. I told God, waste me. You have no excuse not to be available. Your mate John Boko around three months after they are suicide bombers. The guy who want to blow the aircraft. The aircraft, the Nigerian boy. What is that his name? What well, I wanted to blow the aircraft. The bombs were already there. He went to the bathroom. He tried to detonate it. He could not. So he went to the bathroom and set it again. Came back. Not knowing that one man of God, my good friend, was in that aircraft with his wife and six children. Jesus. 
in that flight. He said he was in America the last week. And the man of God was preaching. He wanted to buy a land. He heard God say, give half a million dollars. So he wrote the check, half a million dollars, and gave. He said, well, that boy was in the aircraft trying to detonate. He just had a hand touch him on the shoulder and they start praying. So he said he spoke in tongues for four hours. Suddenly he had a shout. One of the people have jumped on the guy, held him and pressed him down, held his hand. Lo and behold, they removed his suicide bombing bombs. He has already, already put the gadget inside the toilets. Arrange them. The mission was avoided because a man of sacrifice have host eternity yes. in, that, in that plane. Divinity is at work in that atmosphere. Hey. Bodily sacrifice. God cannot preserve what <laughs> you are, you, God cannot preserve what you have not preserved for him. This body, you didn't preserve it for God. God can't preserve it. Holy, holy, are you Lord God Almighty? What is the land? What is the land? You are holy. Oh. What is the land? What is the land? If you are in this church, all you do is go come here every Sunday. You have wasted your importance before God. You have squandered a lifetime. You are by a large waste of God's time. You must rise and repent. And be useful. Sir, anything you spend your time and energy outside of God, God called it bondage. He said in Genesis, Exodus chapter 2, as a random, he said, I've heard the cry of my people who are in Egypt. I have seen their bondage and I've come to deliver them. When they were serving the Egyptian, God called it bondage. But when they were liberated to serve God, God called it service. Hey. If you are not using your energy to serve God, God calls you a man that is in bondage. The day you start using your energy for God, God calls it service. The day you start using your pocket for God and your body and your life, the Bible says you are bought with a price. Your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. Sir, when Israel were using their time and energy to serve the Egyptian, God called it bondage. But when God needed it, he called it service. Whatever is taking your time, your skills, taking your energy outside of God, my brother, my sister, you are in bondage. You need to be free today. Say, let my people go that they may serve me. So the sole reason why I liberated you as a Christian is to serve me. We are doing Nigeria at 100. Many of you are sitting down looking at me as if you employ God. No iota of inconvenience. No iota of sacrifice. Year in, year out. You are not doing nothing to progress the kingdom of God. Even the one, one thousand you give, you have complained. You have discouraged hearts. You have sent people out of church with your little attitudes. But you also know that this church is not as big as it should. But we are doing what bigger churches can do. Yes, sir. Because we are going extra mile to honor God with our resources. Because of the colossalness of the vision God gave us. Bow your head in prayer. Do not allow me. Do not allow me. Do not allow me, Jesus, to go. Empty. If you are here this morning as I am singing, you are not in any department. You are not doing anything in this church. 
you must repent today. Come out and kneel down here. I want to pray for you. If you are not in any department doing nothing in God's house, you only 